Professor Gutzi. We will continue the session by a talk devoted to the mass power spectrum. Uh, 
reactive carbon or reactive carbon on the surface. So uh, <clears throat> here I would like to show one slide when before during the reaction. But first of all, let me explain the experimental technique. We designed a in situ multiplier cell which was working at high temperature, and you could measure it at even low temperature um, <clears throat> by without exposing the, the catalyst to air and without you know changing from one side to the other, just to avoid the oxidation during the transfer of the probe. Uh, uh, the problem here to measure and, uh, and assign this uh, mobile or reactive carbon, which is indicated here by this body of water, is that first of all, at high temperature, when the reaction takes place, uh, there is a considerable change in the, the bivalent factor. Second, if you are using a small metal loading, so you have, you have a very low uh, metal loading and a small particles, um, the recoil free fraction of, of the catalyst is, is again low, so it means that all these factors decreasing the efficiency of inversible measurements. Uh, uh, the third uh, problem is uh, we have to use a nearly 100% uh, enriched iron 57 catalyst in order to increase, you know, to counterbalance the, the lows uh, here. Um, so what we what we did uh, during the reaction, we measured the spectra, and this is uh, what we think that this is due to the, the uh, reactive carbon here. And when you <coughs> evacuated the system, it simply uh, converted into an iron two and iron three uh, uh, plus uh, components. So in fact, um, during the reaction, we had uh, a formation of a higher hydrocarbon plus methane, and then we switched off uh, the carbon monoxide from the stream. We found uh, only methane form, so there was no higher hydrocarbon form after uh, switching off the CO. So it means that some carbon, probably the inactive or or or, or, or or immobile carbon was still on the surface present, but by switching off the, the CO from the uh, system, um, this reactive carbon was stopped. Now, I think the next slide.
just uh, showing this uh, small uh, reactive carbon and how to, to influence the, the effect of, of the, the particle size on the formation of this reactive carbon. Now the first, uh, what we could do, how to, to stabilize small particles, to put iron into the zeolite matrix. By using a uh, sodium X uh, um, zeolite framework, we could identify uh, different species in the, uh, in the, um, in the zeolite matrix. We, have, we found a small quadruple <coughs> that like here. This is outer reduction in hydrogen at the 400 degree C. And a large quadruple uh, that component <coughs> here. After vacuum, of course, there is some changes, but the components are still there. Now, according to some literature, uh, you can uh, identify uh, iron 2 plus in tetrahedral position and iron 2 plus in the octahedral position. Iron 2 plus, after reduction, is located in an octahedral position, coordinately saturated sites, or uh, in the hexagonal prism, whereas the iron tetrahedral position in the uh, super cage of the sodalite. Uh, Sides. Now, what happens if you carry out the action here? You can see that the following spectra. Uh, this A indicates uh, after uh, five, uh, 300 degrees C treatment in CO plus hydrogen. And uh, at high temperature, the second spectra you can see here, and uh, after evacuation, you can see the third spectra here. Uh, <clears throat> the assignment of the different species and relative intensity, what we <coughs> calculated, is shown here. So, in fact, <coughs> you can see that uh, after reduction, you have about 50% of your iron in tetrahedral position, and after treatment in, high, in the CO plus hydrogen mixture, uh, this component decreased considerably, and part of the tetrahedral, uh, tetrahedral position is converted or transferred to the octahedral sites. And after higher temperature, you have a, you have a, a, a new zero component in tetrahedral but a very small amount of iron uh, in carbide form. Now, what is very important here, that you can, uh, this hex carbide or high carbide, can be reduced, the amount of this, by, uh, by using a, a zeolite matrix, where in fact you have a confined particle size growth, so the, uh, the, the condition uh, is not fulfilled, which is applied for the formation of X carbide. Uh, later, I can show you some other uh, evidences for <coughs> comparison. Um, now, the next uh, way of stabilization using a, a reduce, reducible oxide uh, which has a um, interaction with the, with the support itself. Now, this is why we selected uh, iron rhenium system on silica. Now, here shows the different components after reduction uh, at uh, 870K and 70, uh, 720K. Uh, some of were measured at school temperature. And here are the iron, iron ruthenium, Iron and iron, rhenium, sorry. Um, now, here we could distinguish between iron 3 plus, which is not reduced, and iron in different uh, positions, a low coordination and high coordination uh, position, where N plus we could find iron in a 
the superparamagnetic uh, uh, position and the uh, hydrophile split iron, which is which corresponds to a large particle. It's very interesting to see that <coughs> in the case of iron rhenium, uh, you have less amount of iron three, uh, uh, some amount of iron three points left, whereas in the pure iron there is no iron three points left. Which is the most interesting is that on uh, at high temperature reduction in iron there is a 86 percent in a uh, hydrophile split position, uh, whereas in the case of rhenium, uh, all the iron which is reduced in a superparamagnetic uh, uh, particle, yeah. which means that iron can, uh, rhenium can stabilize the, uh, the small particles here. Now, in presence of potassium, you see this component decreased to 21%, which means that addition of potassium uh, again hinders the reduction of iron into a large particle. So in fact, iron mo mobility uh, on the surface is stopped by the presence of, uh, of potassium. One, what is the, the impact uh, on, on the, the reaction? Plus, uh, here is the iron, a small amount of iron 2 plus, 
Uh, after reaction in the CO plus hydrogen at 250 degrees centigrade for 17 hours on the stream, you can see the formation of a inactive carbide <coughs> into the system. So in fact, uh, large particles uh, immediately deactivated by formation of <coughs> inactive carbide, and then the catalytic activity decreases. I do not have here catalytic activity data for this sample. <coughs> Um, on the other hand, by having a 10% iron or magnesium plus 1% aluminum in here, the calcination results in the same spectra as before without the aluminum. But in reduction at the high temperature for 5 hours, you have a magnetite formation which means that uh, the conversion into the large iron particles during reduction is hindered. And uh, the same spectra here after 17 hours at 250 in CO plus hydrogen reaction, which means that these small particles, these magnetite particles, are very stable here. But of course, uh, here you have a, a small a component of alpha iron, of super paramagnetic iron particles. But since it is after reaction, as not during the reaction, it means that uh, even if you have a small amount of iron responsible for the catalytic activity, is after reaction converted into, uh, into magnetite, back into magnetite. So during the reaction, there are formation of small, part, small iron particles, but after <coughs> reaction, uh, you cannot identify those. So to summarize, um, um, there are three types of car carbon on the uh, carbon or carbide. The small small particles are responsible for the formation of reactive or mobile carbide carbide carbon on the surface. The inactive car carbon or immobile carbon is responsible for mainly for the matter information. And the inactive carbide, which is hex carbide, is mainly responsible for the deactivation of the catalyst. You can have several ways to, to stabilize the small particles. And when once you, you are able to stabilize small particles, you have a, <coughs> a possibility to, to form to uh, increase the, the, the proportion of this mobile or reactive carbon, which uh, carries the reaction. Thank you for your attention. Professor Batum. Cal McCollum, BYU. Laszlo, I'm, I'm wondering about that doublet that you showed us at first and uh, signed to uh, an active carbon or I believe yes. an iron carbide, is that? It's a, it's a mobile or reactive carbon. But is it, a, are you saying it's a, a, a surface iron carbide? Yes, it's something like that. Yeah. What, you know, what? it has a very, it's a zero uh, isomer shift, just like the iron, metallic iron, but you, it, it has a very small particle splitting. What I wondered is how could you distinguish between that and, uh, say, a super paramagnetic iron carbide, in other words, very small particles of, well, very small of iron particles carbides that behave super paramagnetically. Can you distinguish between well, the two? Well, uh, if you have super paramagnetic iron, it is a, it's a singlet. You have a singlet. And this is a doublet. And the quadruple splitting is about 0.55 <coughs> millimeter per second. Uh, I'm talking about the carbide itself. Wouldn't you get a doublet for the, uh, the uh, are you saying you get a singlet for the super paramagnetic yes. uh, yes. carbide and not a No, no, um, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no. A singlet for the super paramagnetic okay. iron. Yes, I agree on that. Okay. And this, well, we have some different additional evidences. Now, you can, you can find in C2, muscular spectroscopy, always this doublet during the reaction. 
Now, in, you can assume that this, sh this could be an iron carbide, which when you cool down the sample, appears as a hyperfine split carbide. Fine. It's, it's very difficult to distinguish, but what we could, how we could distinguish it earlier it was that, for instance, in the case of iron ruthenium system, when there was no uh, carbide form, inactive carbide, this doublet steel was existing. I don't see any hands. Thank you very much.